to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Good morning, all Antiochian men in the Diocese of Miami in the Southeast. This is Michael Bakulik once again, and we have another episode of Ask Father Hans for you. Good morning, Father Hans. Good morning, Michael, and good morning, Antiochian men. Father, we received a, a question that is on a very important topic, and as we all know, we've just entered Great Lent, and so this is a very appropriate topic for the season that we're in. Here's how the question reads. Gluttony is considered a sin in our Orthodox faith. Can you offer some advice to engage in spiritual warfare against the self-abuse behavior that is displeasing to God? And Father, I can't help but mention the fact that being in Great Lent, we're all in the midst of the Great Fast. And I know a lot of people, myself included, often really get fasting a little bit wrong, or we really don't understand the reason for it. And I was hoping you could comment on that along with the response to this question. <clears throat> yeah, it, it's, it's a good question. But I want to back up a little bit. Gluttony is considered a sin in our Orthodox faith. Yes, it is, but we under, misunderstand sometimes what a sin is. Okay, we think that the Lord has this grid of morality, and we have to conform ourselves to that moralistic grid in order to please God, right? But that's not the way orthodoxy really sees it. When something is labeled a sin, it is, it is labeled as such, and it is given as such, to show us what is harmful for the soul. All right, so the reason we strive against sin is not so much that God is displeased with us, but in the striving against the sin, that's how we learn to receive and apply his grace in our life. So the law exists, the rules exist to show us what not to do because the doing of it brings harm to our soul but we need to know that and that's why the rule exists but it's really to point us in the other direction which is to receive the grace of god and experience healing in our soul so it's not so much that we don't sin because it displeases god and 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 that's all there is to it. No, no. The, the reason the law exists like that is to bring to our awareness what the native structure of our soul really is and to discover that in the struggle to overcome the sin, how the grace of God is to be a part of our life every day. You know, we are not fully human, and this is orthodoxy, and it's beautiful. We are not fully human unless we're walking in the spirit of God. And the Apostle Paul talks about this, especially in the last chap chapters of Romans, where he says we have to walk in the spirit. And walking in the spirit means not fighting against yourself, Walking in the spirit means learning how to walk with God, God in us, and, and we in God. That we actually, we actually walk in his power. He can give us his power. He can give us his grace. Much like, much like a plant lives in the light of the sun in order to bloom. It needs the warmth of the sun. It lives in the warmth of the sun. It needs the light of the sun because then that bud flowers and that flower becomes what God created it to be. We're kind of like that flower, but what we do is we walk in the light of Christ. We walk in the love of the Lord and that nourishes our soul. 
it nourishes us. And so we bloom, we become the person that God created us to be. So a lot of people go into one thinking, oh, I've got to give up this, I've got to give up that, right? And I've got to do this so God is pleased with me. That's not it at all. Repentance, metania, is a changing of the mind. It's a changing of the mind. And what it is, the changing of the mind to bring us into the people that God created to be, like Bishop Nicholas always says, to become like Christ. And becoming like Christ, well, Michael becomes more Michael. Hans becomes more Hans. George becomes more George. We become the people that God created us to be. And so when we take on these disciplines during Lent, it's really, you know, we, what we focus on is, is the, the things that we struggle with, and that alone. And I'll tell you, in almost all cases, it's gluttony and sensuality. Those are the two big struggles. Now, why are they the two big struggles? Because in, in bringing discipline to our interior lives, in vivifying the soul, which is what the Spirit of God does, We've got to put off, whenever we feel a spiritual need inside, to, go, to satisfy that spiritual need through the flesh, through the body. But we learn this incrementally. We learn it incrementally, and that's why we fast. Because what happens when we fast? What happens when we apply some self-discipline to impulsive habits? We really try and change those. Well, the space in our soul that was driving that behavior actually gets directed towards God. That's what repentance is. And when it gets repent, when it gets directed towards God, what happens? Understanding comes. One of the beautiful things in the canon of St. Andrew is this: repent. It's always about repent. The can canon of St. Andrew is so good because it really understands the human condition. And you can see that St. Andrew of Crete had a lot of experience fighting sin. That's where he gets his wisdom from. But one of the beautiful things in the canon is always repent, repent, repent. So you might gain understanding. So you might gain wisdom. So you might see things that otherwise you could not see. And this is a theme that comes up a lot, because when we do seek to repent, when we do seek to change the mind, when we do seek to bring discipline in areas of our life that we know need them, what happens? The mind always clears up. Clarity comes. Understanding comes. That's the reward of it. How we think is how we see. And when the thoughts get clarified, and the thoughts get clarified when we work to purify the soul, that understanding becomes its own reward because we are just more grounded people. That's what it means when it says, you know, to become the person that Christ created us to be. And there's nothing like having, experiencing inner reintegration. That's what redemption is. And Christ comes to redeem the fallen Adam. When the period of Lent, we're going to see Christ crucified. We're going to see him resurrect from the dead. And it's going to go all the way to Pentecost when the Holy Spirit comes. Well, that's our redemption. It's given to us. Paul lays this out in the book of Romans. It's given to us in baptism. What's given to us in baptism? What's given to us in baptism is the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So that reintegration, that healing in the soul can take place. So sin then is the marker. If you go this way, what will happen is in the soul, there will be disintegration. And the disintegration of the soul is a disintegration of the human person. With repentance, the turning away from the sin is reintegration. It's redemption. It's the substance of our redemption. To be righteous means 
to move towards being rightly ordered the way that God created us. The soul returns to its native structure and its native ordering breathed into by the Holy Spirit that brings it into life. I, whenever I talk about this, I always think about the dry sponge, you know, the sponge on, on <clears throat> the countertop. You haven't used it in a while to dry it up. It's no good. <laughs> you can't scrub anything with it. What do you do? You put it under water. And when the water flows through the sponge, it springs back into shape. And then it, it can do what it was made to do, right? Wash the pots. Our soul's kind of like, without the spirit, a dry sponge. And the spirit is living water. And we become alive, kind of like the sponge coming back to its natural shape is kind of what it's like, by analogy. Now, the gluttony, and it's really the gluttony and the sensuality. Okay, what happens is when, when passions arise, when we feel things in our body, what's really happening is that a desire of the, in the soul for God is directed through the body. So when we eat impulsively, okay, or when we act out sensually in some way or another impulsively, by curbing that, by really working on that, what happens is, is that desire gets, gets directed into its proper direction, which is the thirst for God. That's what it is. And, and gluttony, overeating, and sensuality are really related. They're really closely related. If you're, if you're battling with one, you're battling with the other. All right. And, and, and the going deeper, and this, this is why prayer is important. This is why confession is important. This is why the very structure of the services are important, starting with, you know, Zacchaeus, the prodigal son, but the Sunday of forgiveness. That's really important because lots of times the driver behind the gluttony and, and the sensuality, the reason it goes off in that direction, lots of times it's fed by anger. And what is the anger? Anger, resentment. You have to forgive. You have to forgive, right? And when you forgive and you let those things go, you'll, what you'll find is that the, the, the energy towards gluttony and sensuality diminish. See, and this is what's revealed to us as we begin this journey. Now, when we're on this journey, I'm telling you, it's, it's not a mountaintop experience. <laughs> At least, you know, most people I know, it's not that way for me, right? It's kind of a steady plotting day by day, all right? You do a little bit more every day. And if you, you fall, you mess up, I'm telling you, start over. One of the beautiful things about waking up every morning and having a new day, it's like a mini resurrection. You get to start over. If you messed up on the fast, okay, well, let's start over today. Just start over. That's what's important, right? Be Practice radical self-honesty. Confess your sins when you need to confess your sins. But progress is... Progress is in incremental, but as long as we're moving up, we're doing good. We're doing good. So reality is everybody struggles with this. That's why it's a general theme in Lent, year after year after year, century after century after century. But this is the area that we have to learn how to practice self-discipline. This is the area where each one of us have a certain measure of repentance that we must offer. Open to me the doors of repentance. Oh. So